Hello, it's me. Ah, it's been a day. I came out to my mum today. Um, I've been putting it off for ages and really worrying about it because I didn't know what she would say. Um, she, when I came out as gay and um, was about to marry my wife, my ex-wife, uh, she was really cross about it. I think I might have said this in my previous video. Anyway, she she was really cross and she said, "Oh, I'll, I'll come because you you um, want me there." But um, and then she had a sour face on for the whole day. Um, so I was really concerned, thinking that you know, coming out as male is going to be worse. Uh, but she just took it so calmly. We were we were in the car. I had a day out with her. Um, we went off to a um, cemetery to see my granddad's grave. Uh, now, I work in the funeral industry too, and so we, we got on talking about my, my place of work. And um, she, she said, oh, it would be nice to come and see you sometime. And I thought, oh, gosh. She said, oh, yeah, that would be great. Um, but you need to know that um, they know me as a man, as Will. Um, and so then I, I just, you know, that was the moment. Um, and it wasn't planned at all. But I then just sort of told her about um, how I'd been going up to London to the gender identity clinic and um, how I'd changed my name um, and how I'd, I'd been feeling um, that I, I didn't want to live in a woman, as a woman anymore. And, it, it, you know, I thought I probably could. And, and she just sat there and listened in the car. We were just the two of us in the car. Um, she sat there and listened um, really patiently. She didn't burst into tears or, or get cross or anything. She just sat there listening patiently. Um, and at some point, she sort of typed in, well, she uh, said, well, you've been wearing male clothes for ages. I said, yeah. And she said, now I get to wear, wear um, a suit and tie at work, and it's brilliant. And um, and then uh, later on in the conversation, she said, uh, you know, as a child, you always hated wearing dresses. I said, yeah. She said, but I didn't realise how um, important it was for you. So then I explained, you know, yes, I've, I've minim minimalised it and really tried to tried to fit in as a woman and thought I couldn't do anything about it and, you know, sort of went on to throw that. And she just, again, just sat there and took it all in, took it really calmly. Um, and uh, later on, you know, explaining what, how awful it had been living in a woman, as a woman. Um, and the tears start trickling down my face. Oh, no. Uh, and I said, uh, you know, after a while, and when I'd explained more about what's going to happen, she asked me really com sensible conversations like, well, you know, well, what's going to happen? And I explained about hormones and surgery. And then she asked, what, you know, are you going to have um, genital surgery? And, you know, some really sensible questions. Um, so we talked all about that. Um, and then I said, you know, thank you so much for, for, for taking it so well. I said, you know, I know it's a, it's a big thing. It's a really big thing for, for you. And um, you know, thank you for. She said, "Well, what do you what do you expect me to do?" Um, and I said, "Oh, I didn't know whether you know you'd be cross or whatever." She said, "All I ever want is for you to be happy. It, you know, that's all I ever want for my children." But I didn't know whether it would be whether she'd think the same way. And and it was lovely. And she said, "So do you want me to call you Will from now on?" <laughs> I said, "Well, yeah." I'll, it would be nice, but um, you know, I understand. I've had ten years to think about this, and and you, um, you know, it's a bit shock for you. And I said, and and I understand it's going to be really hard. I said it'll be probably easier when I've got a deep voice and a and a beard. And you know, she agreed. I said, uh, you know, so I won't, you know, yes, ideally, but I won't be cross if you if you don't. Um, and then she asked me if if it was a secret. Or whether I could, whether she could tell her friends, 
Um, and I said, yeah, that's fine. T tell, tell your friends if you, if you need to. If it's up, you know, it's up to you. Whatever makes you feel comfortable. Now, our, none of our social time ever coordinates, co co um, comes together, except for when we go to our local horticultural society show. We both belong to that. So I said, you know, and I, I'm happy to not come. To stop doing that if it's going to embarrass you and she said no no it's not going to embarrass me at all and that's just her response is everything you would hope it to be and i can't believe that i have sorry i'm getting all i can't believe that i have let i have worried about telling her for so long And I'm glad I did it. I'm glad I've told her now. I'm so glad that I've told her before starting hormones. Because at first I thought what I was going to do was start hormones and then tell her when something was changing. But actually, I'm glad I've done it beforehand because now she'll feel, she won't feel like she's been lied to for a long time, I, I'm hoping. But... Um, I really thought it was going to be a lot worse, and and it wasn't. So you know, she, she's she's only young. She's only sixty four. Um, she was young when she had me. So, and I I just thought I just thought it would be horrendous, and actually it was lovely. Um, so I encourage all you guys that are worrying about it and thinking about it and thinking. When is the right time to tell, to bite the bullet and say it? Um, I'm glad I did. Um, I, don't, I don't know what's going to happen now. She might just ignore it all. And, but I don't think she will. But at least it's out in the open and I'm not lying to her anymore. Uh, I'll leave it there.